The Minnesota coronary experiment was a study that was done over a period of five years. This was from 1968 to 1973 that was supposed to show that the diet heart hypothesis is correct. And what they were postulating is that, you know, saturated fat increases atherosclerosis and all cause mortality, you know, specifically um, through uh, heart attacks and that polyunsaturated fats that we find in seed oils, for example, corn oil or soybean oil and so on, that those are protective to the heart because they've shown in the past that, you know, these seed oils or polyunsaturated fats can lower total cholesterol or more specifically LDL cholesterol. And, you know, that was thought to be the decisive factor here. So to really drive this home, uh, they did this massive study, which was really impressive, by the way. So from 1968 to 1973, over a five-year period, and um, it turned out that they were quite disappointed with the data because it showed the inverse of what they were postulating. However, we still then, you know, used the diet heart hypothesis to base our dietary guidelines on. And I mean, to this day, um, I think it's changing a little bit now, but the recommendation is still consume less than 10% of your total calories from saturated fats. Saturated fats are bad. They cause heart disease. They're bad for you. Now, um, we had this data back then. However, it wasn't really published. Um, they were disappointed with the data. Parts of this are published. It's a fascinating story. This is really history at this point. But, um, you know, I want to talk about the publication that's here in the British Medical Journal that was uh, very interesting. This is from 2016. And I talked about it because I think um, the title here is Reevaluation of the Traditional Diet Heart Hypothesis Analysis of Recovered Data from the Minnesota Coronary Experiment. And recovered is because, you know, a lot of this data was either never published or it was published in some obscure journal out of the country or it was just, you know, not published at all. You know, and they had a lot of raw data. Um, I want to talk a bit about how this whole thing was done. And it was really, I mean, a huge undertaking to, to do this really, you know. So this was a double blind randomized controlled trial um, and this was supposed to test whether replacement of saturated fat with vegetable oil rich in linoleic acid. This is this omega-6 linoleic acid that I keep talking about or warning about that I think is very dangerous for us. Um, if that reduces coronary heart disease and death by lowering serum cholesterol. And so they um, had this, the setting was in um, one nursing home and six state mental hospitals in Minnesota, United States. Now, first of all today, I mean, just ethically, we couldn't really do this. I mean, you have a population of people who I think are going to have a hard time giving consent. You know, you have a, a nursing home with elderly people. There's probably a very high rate of dementia. And then you have, um, you know, mental hospitals. And again, a lot of times people with mental illness, you know, they have a hard time consenting to anything. But they, you know, with a randomized massive trial, there were uh, 9,423 participants in all uh, between the ages of 20 and 97 years of age. So this was a big undertaking. And again, this whole thing lasted for about five years and they divided them, you know, I mean, it was, it was randomized, it was double blinded. So they had uh, groups that uh, were fed a, you know, diet that was um, high in um, saturated fat, mostly butter, and then a group that was fed something that looked like butter. So they used a margarine, a corn oil margarine. So they really even kept it very much um, the same uh, in terms of the way it looked and that's partially because the researchers are not supposed to know who gets which diet so they kind of made this really indistinguishable which is I mean a great way to do this I think right um, so the intervention was serum cholesterol lowering diet that replaced saturated fat with linoleic acid from corn oil and uh, corn oil polyunsaturated margarine control diet was high in saturated fat from animal fats common margarine and shortening so the one issue I actually have with the study is that even in the uh, control diet, the people that got the saturated fat, they <laughs> still included some fats that I absolutely would not agree with. You know, there were some shortenings and, you know, some margarine. So anyway, but all in all, I think the design was very good. So and then the main uh, outcome measures was, you know, death of all causes. You know, they looked at death of all causes in these groups. Um, they looked at changes in um, serum cholesterol and, 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 and death and, you know, how that uh, relates and uh, coronary arteriosclerosis and myocardial infarcts detected at autopsy. So they did autopsies of these people that passed away. So re the results were quite disappointing for the researchers. Um, they uh, talk about this here. Uh, Kepler myographs showed no mortality benefits for the intervention group in the full randomized cohort or for any uh, pre-specified subgroups. There was a 22% higher risk of death for each 30 milligrams per deciliter reduction in serum cholesterol. Also very interesting. Um, they talk about here, there was no evidence uh, of benefit in the intervention group for 
coronary um, atherosclerosis or myocardial infarcts. Systematic review identifies five randomized controlled trials for inclusion. In meta-analysis, these cholesterol-lowering interventions showed no evidence of benefit on mortality from coronary or heart disease or all-cause mortality for that case. Actually, now they had a higher mortality in, unfortunately, the group that took in the vegetable oils in higher amounts. They came to the conclusion available evidence from randomized controlled trials shows that replacement of saturated fat in the diet with linoleic acid effectively lowers serum cholesterol, which is what we postulated that it would do, but does not support the hypothesis that this translates into a lower risk of death from coronary heart disease or or causes. Findings from the Minnesota coronary experiment add to the growing evidence that incomplete publication has contributed to overestimation of the benefit of replacing saturated fat with vegetable oils rich in linoleic acid. And I think that's really a, an interesting point. I mean, you know, we're basing or we did base um, this whole kind of um, change in our nutrition in the guidelines on uh, a hypothesis that even in this very, very big interventional trial, you know, did not really show any, any positive effect. If anything, there was a negative effect here. And we did have some data before that was really, um, when you look at epidemiologic data, this is an interventional study, which has a lot more significance. And it you know, didn't show that this did anything positive at all, unfortunately. So they go in a bit of detail here on the serum cholesterol lowering diet. So that's the diet that they followed that thought, hey, look, this might be very heart protective. This is the diet that is very rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids. And um, they used liquid corn oil and it was used in place of usual hospital cooking fats, which included some hydrogenated oils, which I don't agree with either, <laughs> but they had those back then. And was added to numerous food items to talk about salad dressings, um, filled beef, so they then used lean ground beef and then they added that oil in there. So they really, really uh, made sure that, you know, the saturated fats were cut out and this polyunsaturated corn oil was put in there. And they were quite successful. The intervention produced a mean reduction in dietary saturated fat by about 50%, which is really you know, significant from 18.5% to 9.2% of calories, right? And increased linoleic acid intake by more than 280%. So that was obviously quite successful. Now, so the control diet, so that was the diet that was high in saturated fat, wasn't perfect by any means. I mean, they used butter and all these kind of things, so they do had a, they, they did have a, a much higher amount of saturated fats in there. One problem is they had a lot of trans fats in here, and that is um, because it says here, um, as common margarines and shortenings of this period were rich sources of industrially produced trans fat acids, trans fatty acids, the uh, control diet contains substantial quantities of trans fats. Again, but they achieved the main objective, which was, you know, they had a very high amount of saturated fat in the control diet, and then they had the um, very, very high polyunsaturated fat in the um, experimental group. So this data was, you know, quite frustrating for the authors. And again, they were very hesitant to publish this data because it really kind of disproved their whole hypothesis. And it's a bit shocking that still, you know, we um, continued to push that agenda. Um, they're right here, though the uh, Minnesota coronary experiment intervention um, effectively lowered serum cholesterol in all um, pre-specified subgroups, there was no clinical benefit in any group. Paradoxically, the Minnesota um, coronary experiment participants who had greater reduction in serum cholesterol had a higher rather than lower risk of death. And again, this is something that they couldn't really come to terms with. I mean, there were all cause mortality went up and it showed that, you know, the risk of atherosclerosis and death of cardiovascular issues um, did not change between the groups, right? So what shows us, I mean, one that basically, you know, you know, changing from saturated fat to polyunsaturated fats, which is what we've been instructed to do for, for many, many years now, is not beneficial in terms of preventing um, cardiovascular uh, mortality, but more so there's other issues. And there are several papers, and I'm gonna do other videos about this that talk about it, that link the polyunsaturated fats, specifically the omega-6 linoleic acids to increase in obesity, increase in cancer, increase in many other diseases. And I think it's one of the things that we need to understand that these um, fats, this omega-6 uh, fatty acids, yes, we're lowering total cholesterol, we're lowering LDL cholesterol, but it has no impact because we know that the cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol that is of concern is the oxidized LDL ultimately that can cause atherosclerosis. Um, and the regular you know, LDL is a useful molecule. LDL is low-density lipoprotein, which is essentially really a bus that carries around different fats. And then which of these fats become oxidized at the highest proportion? It is this omega-6 linoleic acid.
Furthermore, omega-6 linoleic acid is not easily used up, metabolized, and you know, we can't really use it very well. These are usually structure, structure and signaling molecules. Now, they do accumulate in our adipocytes, in our fat cells, and actually cause the fat cell to hypertrophy. And I did another video about this to show this. So these fat cells become malfunctioning in that their usual um, functioning is disturbed. Usually fat cells go to a certain size, then they divide, and then there's apoptosis where they will also die off. That's all disturbed. So these fat cells, they can't divide anymore, but they become huge. So there's a big um, accumulation of these omega-6 fatty acids in the fat, cell, fat cells. They disturb the normal metabolism of the cell, which is hugely problematic because we're learning more and more that these cells are not just sitting there in, you know, in unsightly places and you know, uh, storage of energy, but they do have a function and there's communication between cells and they're sending out molecules. So it's not like they're just sitting there, but this is all disturbed. And now you have these giant fat cells developing that are really malfunctioning. Now, and this um, uh, omega-6 linoleic acid in there uh, starts to oxidize and the breakdown products are horribly toxic and they can cause disease. I mean, they can cause malfunction of the cells, they can cause cancer, they can cause heart disease, they can cause many, many problems. Um, and it takes a long time for this accumulated omega-6 linoleic acid to be um, released, absorbed or, or, or excreted. And it's estimated it takes over two years. So one concern that I always have, if, if we use groups today, now this is actually you know, not too bad because this was done quite a while ago. There was already a high amount of, as, as, as you've read from the study, trans fats, and there's a, there was a very high amount obviously of um, uh, uh, seed oils used already in that time. Um, but you know, since that time, we've used a lot more. And if we do studies today with our population today, we're so exposed to these oils. If you read any food packaging, you're gonna find soybean oil, canola oil, you're gonna find all these seed oils, all these omega-6 linoleic acid rich oils used in everyday goods that we're consuming. So, and since it takes about two years to get rid of them, when we now compare groups on, let's say a saturated fat diet versus a polyunsaturated fat, we've, we've all been on the polyunsaturated fat diet for a long time whether we like it or not, because it's in our foods. And we would have to really go to um, cultures that are, you know, outside, you know, that are really cut off from civilization and don't have access to these oils to see, um, you know, how healthy they are. And they've done this in the 60s and 70s. And you know, they looked at tribes in Africa and you know, they looked at tribes in uh, New Guinea. And they found that populations really not exposed to these um, omega-6 linoleic acid-rich seed oils are much healthier, you know. Heart disease is very low. They couldn't even find any, you know. Cancer is very low. I mean, they have much lower incidence of, of these diseases that are plaguing modern society. And we know, I mean, these things are on the rise. You know, diabetes is on the rise, cancer is on the rise, heart disease is on the rise. I mean, we're not getting healthier, even though we have been very good at following the advice that was, you know, given us by the government to say, hey, look, you know, cut down your saturated fat. So obviously, the cultures that are not exposed to these um, uh, seed oils seem to be doing much better and they're consuming a lot uh, of, of saturated fat, whether it's from animal fats, like, you know, in the Maasai, for example, in Africa, then there's some tribes in New Guinea and they're, they're eating more um, coconut oil. So these are also sat tropical saturated fats, but they don't have access really to these manufactured seed oils. And one of the reasons is, I mean, this is in, you know, these are refineries making them, they don't have that. <laughs> I mean, you, you can eat a few seeds and you get a minimal amount of oil. I think that's fine. I don't mind people consuming, you know, almonds and, and some nuts and all that. The amount of these omega-6 fatty acids we get from just eating seeds is very low. But when we are extracting them in these refineries, when we take grape seeds or when we take soybeans and we make this sludge out of them, we extract it with hexane or other chemicals and then we deodorize the sludge because it stinks horribly and make it into an oil. That's something that we would never consume in these amounts in our regular foods. And that's kind of, you know, where we are kind of living this experiment right now that we really have, I mean, we're all <laughs> the experimental group. Um, and again, it takes a long time to get rid of them. I think, you know, we can all take steps to, to decrease it. And again, it'll, it'll pay off in the, in the long run because, you know, after a certain time, we do get rid of these fats, but it does take a very long time. But so, you know, comparing today, um, you know, uh, populations within, let's say, uh, any, you know, Western country is not a great way to do this, these experiments. Now, in the 60s and 70s, when this experiment was done, it was a little bit better. There was still, there was already a high amount of these seed oils present.
But when you look at the curve, you know, the curve, I mean, has gone up since then even, right? When we look further back, it was even better. When you look at the early 1900s, you know, the, our incidence of chronic and all, all, all diseases that are plaguing us as a civilization from cancer to heart disease to diabetes were significantly lower. Obesity was much lower. So yeah, we do see correlation from epidemiology, you know, and again, a correlation doesn't equal causation, but here they did an interventional trial where we can prove causation. And the causation is actually, again, showing that um, the uh, omega-6 linoleic acid, if anything, seems to be detrimental to health and not preventing uh, coronary artery disease or other diseases. So all cause mortality went, went up. <clears throat> I think this is very significant. I think we need to look at the, uh, data like this because this was a fantastic study. The, the, the design was amazing. Again, something we couldn't today replicate, I believe. Uh, but we should learn from this. We should learn that we were really on the wrong track with this. Now we have a whole industry that was set up with, you know, producing these um, omega-6 linoleic acid-rich oils, a whole industry that has been thriving on this. And of course, there's now money involved and we've got, gotten these gears into, into you know, motion. The American Heart Association is still clinging to about four studies that are kind of, you know, done, I think, uh, with very poor data um, that show, hey, look, you know, you're lowering your LDL cholesterol. So we believe that's the right thing to do because lowering LDL cholesterol will prevent heart disease. That's a very simplified version to look at it. And, you know, again, if this was the case, I think we would have seen uh, in this study and, you know, in the uh, Minnesota coronary experiment or in other trials that were done similarly, we would have seen some evidence and there's not. So I believe that we were really wrong to um, vilify the saturated fats and replacing it with polyunsaturated fats, high in linoleic acid. I think that was a big mistake. And, um, you know, hopefully we learn from this, you know, hopefully we understand that if we eat good unprocessed fats, we don't have to be afraid of saturated fats. It doesn't mean we have to guzzle them, right? But eating things like, you know, uh, butter or, you know, uh, beef tallow, uh, but even things like more non-saturated fats, like olive oil and avocado oil, those things are good. And we can consume those. We can, um, you know, greatly contribute to our health by eating healthier fats. Fats are essential as are proteins, carbohydrates, something that is not essential. And we can play with the amounts we've taken in there. We've certainly taken in too many processed carbohydrates, of course. But again, vilifying saturated fat, I think, was the wrong approach. And we should learn from this and hopefully um, get a better understanding of, you know, how to design our diets to have the best outcome for our health.